Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Yes, you did click on a Guess the Bonds Okay video. This is not a bait and switch, and this is not a sponsor or anything like that. Seek Sustainable Japan did the interview with Jason that I used for footage in my video about him and his channel. At the time, it was the only footage like it that I could find, and because I was so focused on saying what I needed to say about Jason, I didn't ask permission to use their footage. That was a mistake on my part. Fortunately, they were very cool about it, and only asked for a link in the description of my video, which I did, as well as apologize for the oversight. But, after looking at the channel a little more, I felt like giving it a little advertisement of sorts was the right thing to do. They're clearly trying to do some good, and whether or not it's a topic of specific interest to you, it's good to know people like this are out there putting in the work to make the world a better place. And if you or someone you know has an interest in environmental issues, maybe we can get a few more eyeballs on their work. So, if this is something that interests you, check them out. Now, let's get on with the bonds, okay? Okay, here's Chio Tasuke's Guess the Banzuke Helper page. I've shown this before, it's really good and it's actually been upgraded, so I want to go through what it does really quickly. You can look at the previous Basho, so you can see everybody, basically it's a Guess the Banzuke entry only with all of the guys on the right, that's where they ended up. You can see the kind of movements that they had, so on and so forth. We go back, now multiple Rikishi can occupy a single slot in the new Banzuke. Simple enough, that I believe that was in place before, so if I want Kotonowaka and Wakamoto Haru to be in the same place, they can go there, so that's easy. Click on an individual Rikishi's range cha uh, rank change to run a sumo DB query with the Rikishi's current rank, number of wins, and the new rank that will be highlighted. So here's what that looks like. Let's say I have, all right, Nishikigi was nine and six, right? So let's say I move him up to two west, and I wanna see, now, what it's not saying is that it will only show you the Bashos where somebody went from 5 West to 2 West on this record. What it shows you is this. The highlighted ones are where that wrestler went from 5 West to 2 West specifically, but it shows you all of the Bashos from 1939 onwards where somebody went 9 and 6 at Maegashira 5 West and how they, well, where they ended up in the next Basho. So, it's actually very rare in the course of history that they end up at 2 West specifically, but that's not really a surprise. The Banzuke has reasons for guys to get bumped all over the place. Usually they end up going a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. You know, that's what we're here to guess. That's what we're here to figure out. The next thing, we'll close that. Your every move is automatically saved to the browser's local storage so it doesn't reset when you refresh the page or close the browser. So basically you can work on this Say, I'll come back to it later, close it down, come back, and it'll still be there, as long as you don't clear your cache or anything. Sign in with Google, you can save your bonds okay if you want to be safe. Now, open Rikishi information kit page. So Nishikigi, if I double click on him here, with this setting, I'll get Nishikigi's page. But, you can actually get to his page another way. If you click on the record he had, you'll get the Basho previous, the, the record for the Basho that that's related to. So now we have that, and if we want to get to his page, we can just click on his name. So another option for double click is return it to the old Banzuke. For anybody who really gets tired of drag, 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 it's like, okay, I'm, I want to reset a couple things, let me move him back, double click, bang, he's back in the original Banzuke. You can also have it do nothing if you've got a heavy finger and you tend to double click a lot unintentionally, Maybe you want to do that. I like it on return it to the old Banzuke. Dropping on an occupied slot. So I showed you its stacks. I like that. I find that extremely helpful. But one thing that some people wanted was the ability to, oh man, I forgot a guy and now I got to move all these guys down. I don't want to have to click and drag 37 guys one slot each, right? So if you put it on shift, we've got... All right, we put Miyogiryu here, and Nishikigi here, Satanoumi here. Well, if we put uh, Midori Fuji here, boom, they all get bumped back a slot. So that's pretty cool. These are really good upgrades. It's a great, great tool. Uh, this is gonna be linked in the description. Check it out. Go on the Sumo forum, send them some thanks. It's really, really useful. Okay, let's get on with the actual Banzuke itself. So Hatsu 2023 was not quite as crazy with everybody at the top getting winning records and creating an enormous log jam. The movement this time around should be a little bit easier to work out, but exactly how much? For that, 
we want to go back to the why you're going to hate the next Banzuke video that I made. Now, it's currently unlisted due to the copyright issues. Um, I will link it. It's just unlisted. You can go watch it. But I am going to use some of the ideas, the terms, the numbers that I introduced in that video. I'll also explain them here. You don't have to watch that to understand. So first, what we need to do is move over the guys who are definitely going to stay in the Sanyaku. Here we have seven definites. We've got Terano Fuji, obviously remains Yokozuna. Takekesho remains the only Ozeki. Wakataka Kage and Hoshoryu will stay at Sekiwake 1 because they had winning records, but it, they're not going to become Ozeki. Kiribayama will go up because Akomasubi with 11 wins is pretty much always promoted into Sekiwake, even if they have to open a new slot for him. Katona Waka and Wakamoto Haru both had winning records at Komasubi, but not enough to take over a new Sekiwake slot, most likely. We'll keep Kotona Waka ahead of Wakamoto Haru because this way he still gets a promotion from west to east. Wakamoto Haru goes from two west to one west, so that's fine. So now that's seven guys. Well, isn't that gonna cause a problem like with the last Banzuke? Not nearly to the same extent, but it's fair to say there's gonna be at least one more guy, and that is Tobizaru. Tobizaru went eight and seven at Maegashira one east. That's basically been considered a guarantee that you're gonna move up to Komasubi, even if it means Komasubi two. So now we have eight guys. Is that gonna be correct? Well, let's go back to all the stuff that we introduced with the Hate the Banzuke video and talk it over. Let's look at the math and see what we should expect. Let's start with unused promotion ranks. Briefly, what this means is that if guys towards the top have winning records, but they can't be promoted because they're too high ranked, there's nowhere for them to go other than into ranks that don't simply go off of what your win-loss record is, then their wins still earn them promotion ranks, but they can't use them. So those are unused promotion ranks. These are important because every time one of these guys wins, somebody else loses. So even though they're not going up, someone else is going down. This is what creates some gaps in the Banzuke that we can fill later, which creates free-flowing movement and makes everything look nice and fluid and you know, gives us the uh, under, uh, under demotions and over promotions that we really like to see with our favorite wrestlers. So what does that add up to here? First, and I've got, I'm borrowing a stylus. We're going to see how this works out. So first, Takakesho was 12 and 3. He can't go anywhere, so he's going to be plus 9. Wakataka Kage and Hoshoryu also can't go anywhere, so that's plus three for Waka and plus one for Hoshoryu. Now those are the obvious ones, because they're at ranks that just can't go up. But we also have to remember, Kiribayama, 11 and four at Komasubi, he can only go up one rank to Sekiwake. So by definition, he has a minimum of six ranks that he cannot use. Likewise, Daesho, who I haven't pictured here, but we'll talk about him in a minute, he went 10 and 5. The most he can do is go up to Sekiwake, which is two ranks. So he can go up another three. When you add all this together, you've got a grand total of, all right, let's change the ink to black, and then the UPR, the unused promotion ranks, are a total of plus 22. We've got 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 3 is 13, plus 6 is 19, plus 3 is 22. So that's pretty good. That's a lot of promotion ranks being unused, which means there's a lot of losses pushing guys down. That's going to create gaps later. Next, we look at the Kyujo guys. There's a pretty decent amount here. One of the things that made going into Hatsu such a mess was that there were really no Kyujos of node. Terano Fuji's doesn't matter because he's not going down the ranks, but the other ones do. So right here, we've got uh, Takiyasu. Obviously, he has nine ranks. So the reason these Kyujo ranks matter is that every time somebody takes a Kyujo loss, that's one rank down for them, but there's no win to balance that out and move somebody else up. So again, this moves guys down. Other guys aren't moving up. This creates gaps, which we fill. More free and fluid movement. Ichi no Jo... Now, he was 0-15, obviously, because he was out for the whole tournament, but it's not 15 Kyujo ranks that are relevant. From Maegashira 7 down until the point where he's out of the division is 10 ranks. So he actually is plus 10, not plus 15. Wow, that's a terrible... 
Let me let me fix that real quick. Holy cow, that's ugly as hell. So plus ten. And then oh, I don't know if the stylus is gonna work real well. And then Tochi Notion. He was two and three before he went Kyujo. So he's gonna drop a rank because of he's got one more loss than win. After that, there are four and a half more ranks before he drops out of the division. So he's got effectively plus 4.5 Kyujo ranks. So 9 plus 10 plus 4.5 is 23.5. So there's who boy. The Kyujo ranks add another 23.5, right? Retirement, Okinoumi. Now, I really can't understate how rare it is for guys to retire mid-tournament from just a regular old Maegashira rank. It really doesn't happen, and now it's happened two tournaments in a row. Anyway, that's not that important. Okinoumi gives up four and a half ranks to everybody else because he just jumps out of the division. He retired. So once again, like Tochi Notion, he is plus 4.5. So retirement ranks. I should start saying Intai because that's the official word. Um, plus 4.5. So you total that up, and we're at plus 50. So that's a lot. That's a lot of positive movement. But there is a flip side. The main flip side is unused demotion ranks. This is the opposite of unused promotion ranks. How does this work? Well, Chiyomaru is the best example. At 4 and 11, he has minus 7, right? He has uh, uh, 7 more losses than wins. But he can only drop a half rank before he's out of the division. Every loss he has, though, is a win for somebody else that helps push them up. So in this case, there are six and a half ranks worth of demotion that are not going to impact him in Makauchi. So that is a negative for the division for the overall movement. Okinoumi went 0-6. In the same way, he handed out six wins to guys that will push them up, but he's not using any of those demotion ranks because he retired. So he added four and a half by retiring, but he's taking away six through his own six record. So that's a minus six, and that leaves us with minus 12.5 for UDR. Let's draw a better R, which gives us a final total of plus 37, 37.5 at the time that I made the Hate the Banzuke video, for that Basho, if they got really, really tight with the Sanyaku slots and went down to 7, the overall number was going to be minus 45. So obviously this is hugely different, but so far we have not taken into account any reductions to the Sanyaku. The thing to keep in mind is that every reduction, every slot that is taken away from the Sanyaku, that guy gets pushed down into Maegashira which pushes everybody else down. There's 16 ranks worth of guys, so any Sanyaku slots that are lost, so a guy is, it, he drops out of that group and then isn't replaced, is minus 16 to this number here. So let's clear this screen. So if we start with our 37.5 number, now every guy who drops out of the Sanyaku without being replaced is pushing down everybody else. There's 16 ranks worth of guys, so that's minus 16 to this number, which gives us, if one guy drops out, so if we go from 10 Sanyaku to 9, we end up at 21.5, which plus 21.5 is still pretty good. Like, historically, it's not by any means the best uh, for movement, but there's a lot of positive movement there. There's a lot of fluid movement. That's still pretty good. If we go from 10 to 8, then we have to take out another 16, uh, and then we end up at 5.5. Now, even though the last Basho, Hatsu, was, uh, even though there were two more guys than a lot of us thought were going to end up in the Sanyaku, even though they went back to 10, when you do all the numbers together, that turned out to be about even. When you do all the math we just did, with no Sanyaku dropouts, it still ended up around zero. So, even if we go from 10 to 8, there should be a small amount of... Uh, more movement than there was the last time. So we can get away with 8. And in fact, the idea of going back to 10 seems 
like you would need a really good reason because if they're going to take advantage of a good situation to shrink the Sanyaku a little and avoid the kind of disaster Banzukes they were looking at last time, this is when they want to do it. So how many guys are we going to have in the Sanyaku? That's the big question. Here's what I'm thinking. If you click on Daesho's record, actually, let's do it this way. If you move Daesho to Maegashira 1 East, so let's say we assume that he does not get promoted to Komasubi. Well, we do the trick of clicking on the, the link of like, what's the movement that he would have. And this is what we end up with. 1959 to 2023, notice that nothing is highlighted. It has never occurred that a guy went 10 and 5 at Maegashira 1 West and did not get promoted to at least Komasubi. It has never, ever, ever happened. And the truth is, it seems like it's really unlikely for that to happen now. For one, mathematically, he places well above Tobizaru. And if Tobizaru goes up, what they have often, although not always done recently, is move up guys who would be ahead of that automatic promotion for Maegashira 1 East. Plus, even when the Sanyaku was looking really tight in previous Bashos, like we joke about Daesho going from 1 West to Komasubi 2 West with a 13 and 2 record, but he did go to Komasubi. The idea that he would get thwarted and only move up moved up a half rank from one west with a 10 and 5 in really any circumstances is hard to fathom so it's very likely that he'll end up at komasubi 2 with tobizaru now is he going to end up ahead of tobizaru uh, going by the math you'd think so i think he'll probably end up ahead of tobizaru but that's not the most important thing if you're trying to predict the bonds okay the most important thing is just figuring out how many sanyaku there are going to be eight seems unlikely because tobizaru has to go up and it's hard to see them not moving up Daesho. What about 10? Well, who's the next guy in line? Tamawashi. Okay, so he was two west. Where are we going to move him? Well, we either have to move him into a fifth Komasubi slot, obviously he's not going to Sekiwake, or we put him to probably Maegashira 1 East, right? A lot of people, I don't know about a lot of people, but some people suggested that he would get moved up to Komasubi, so there would be five, because he calculates ahead of Tobizaru. By the math, Tamawashi should be a half rank ahead of him. However, a year ago, Daisha went 8 and 7 at Maegashira 1 East, pushed into Komasubi, pushed into Sanyaku. Ichino Joe was 9 and 6 at Maegashira 2 East, and he only went up to 1 East. 9 and 6 does not look like it's going to provoke the, the committee to open yet another Komasubi slot when they don't need to. Clearly, the only reason they did it last time was because the sport was going to look like a joke. The ranking system was going to be an absolute mess, an absolute catastrophe if they didn't push at least one more guy up. And my personal opinion is that they moved up Meisei and Wakamoto Haru because they were tied. And why argue it? Just get them both up there and save yourself a headache. It ended up working out for him. This Banzuke is going to be a lot easier to figure out. There's no reason Tamawashi needs to go up past Maegashira 1. That's the perfect spot for him, so we leave him there. After this point, let's just calculate everybody where they're supposed to go in these ranks. Alright, as you can see, now we have 42 Rikishi placed. So, that's everybody we need. You'll notice, off on the left, Ichi no Joe, Tochi no Shin, Okonomi, and Chiyomaru haven't been moved. I would push them into, like, the 17 or 18 slots if they mathematically went there, but they don't. They drop well below that, and I've moved the top four guys from Jurio, who should go up in their place. Now, you may notice that I didn't place Asanoyama. If I were to place him, he would end up at 15 West. Now, he is ahead in th just by pure calculation of Chiyoshoma, Surugisho, and Mitoryu. So, if that's the case, why isn't he... So, if one of these guys were going to drop out, well, the lowest one is Mitoryu. So why aren't we just scribbling him out and putting Asanoyama in his place? Bringing back the prodigal son, and everybody's happy with our really, really, really trash stars. Normally, Jurio promotees do not get treated exactly the same as Makauchi wrestlers. There is a certain amount of favoritism that goes to the guys who are in Makauchi, presumably because the level of competition is higher. 
Just because it's Asanoyama doesn't change that. Mitoryu might be the guy that they'll be perfectly happy to see get kicked out of Makauchi, and I'm not saying it can't happen. It could happen. But if this was a case where Asanoyama calculated to like Jurio 1 West and Mitoryu to Jurio 2, Jurio 2 West, I think that they would kick Asanoyama into Makauchi and leave Mitoryu out. But because Mitoryu did not drop himself out of the division, I don't think they're making that call. And that leaves us with the question of what to do with all the positions where guys are tied. And the answer is, I don't know. Also, I'm not going to try and answer those questions. This is a draft. I am still a little bit competitive. I don't want to give away everything that I think about the Guess the Banzuke competition. More than that, though, I haven't really decided what I think is going to happen. What I will say is this. Generally speaking, when in the past, if you've got two guys who are like they both have losing records, the one who started at the higher rank has tended to be favored. But in the last Basho, whether you had mixed groups, guys with winning records and losing records at the same rank, um, two guys with winning records, two guys with losing records, they seem to favor the guys with the better records much more. I don't know why that change came. It could have been a one-off thing. Maybe it was part and parcel of their shift in being willing to expand the Sanyaku. I don't know. I really don't know. I have to think about this some more. So the main questions are going to be the ones you see here. Who gets prioritized between Abi and Ryuden? What do you think is going to happen with Mitaki Yumi and Onisho when you figure, okay, let's say, you know, going by what I said, Ryuden is the one that ends up at Maegashira to East and Abi gets pushed back down. Well, Nishikigi now gets pushed back, which means Onisho and Mitaki Yumi get pushed back. So now who gets favored, right? Those are the kind of things you have to look at, all the chain reactions, and figure out what you think is going to happen. Midori Fuji and Endo. I don't know. Mio Giryu and Hiro Umi are both going to get knocked back by whatever happens with Aoyama and Ichiyamamoto. One thing we can do is safely move up guys where nobody can get pushed back. So we know that no matter what happens with Onisho and Mitaki Yumi, between them and Meisei, four west is as far as that goes. So Kota Shoho, we can move up. Midori Fuji and Endo, we can move up. Well, one of them is going to end up at 6 East. Which one is it going to be? Not sure. Okudo Fuji, Sadano Umi, Ura, Ura looks like he might not go anywhere, so hey, I'm happy about that. Ichiyamamoto and Aoyama will take up both sides of uh, Maegashira 8. Which one's going to go where? I don't know. Miyogiryu and Hiroto Umi are going to be at 9. Which one's going to go where? I don't know. Takiyu, Takiyasu and Nishiki Fuji should be the ones to take up Maegashira 10. Now, is Takiyasu going to get a little bit of favoritism because he's coming all the way down from Sekiwake? I will say this. You might notice that I have Shodai at Maegashira 1 West, and that's two ranks below Sekiwake. I did that because, I've mentioned this in the past, uh, I think it was Gurawake on the Sumo Forum pointed out that guys in Sanyaku seem to get about a rank of padding taken off of their demotions when they drop back to Maegashira. I already calculated that in, for Shodai, for Takiyasu, for Meisei. Takiyasu still could get more favoritism. He could get bumped ahead of some of these guys, I'm not sure. Uh, that would mean Azumaru goes to 11 East, Takano Sho, 11 West, Kagiyaki goes up. What happens with the Jurio guys? Koto Echo's not that far behind Dai Shoho, so does he get favored? Well, he can only go to 13 West, so somebody, like, he, that's as high as he can go. So who's going to take up these 12 slots? Are they going to bump Daishoho up further? Are they going to bump Takara Fuji way up? It could end up looking like that. And then Daishoho goes there. Can Bozan, Bushozan. Um, does Oho end up ahead of Bushozan? And then Hokuseiho gets chipped back down, right? We're going to have a 17 West under this setup because we have 9 Sanyaku. So that looks like it's definitely going to be Mitoryu. Shioshoma, Surugisho, what are we going to do with those? I don't know. There are a lot of questions left. I would love for people to talk about this in the comments. I'm sure on some of the Discord servers I go to, we're going to talk about stuff there as well. Um, on the Sumo Forum, we'll talk about it. Regardless of where you choose to interact with the community, there's probably a Bonsuke conversation going on. 
Like I said, I'll have a link to the helper in the description. I'll also put a link to the Guess the Bonzuke thread on the Sumo forum. So if you've never played the game before, you can enter, have fun, join with us. It's a lot of fun. Other than that, that's it for our first Guess the Bonzuke Draft Edition. This was fun. I think I might do this again. I kind of like the idea of the stylus. Maybe I just need to get used to it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, other than that, though, we'll be back soon with a Torakumi video. Have a great day.